Okay, so we're here on uh, uh, Tree Robot uh, Gia uh, grazing farm here in uh, Tipperary. Um, we're about to have a look at the cow flow around the yard, uh, look at the milking process through the robots, and also have a, a bit of a talk about uh, the challenges around ABC grazing and uh, cow flow. Um, so here we are now at the entrance to the, the milking yard. Um, we've got uh, roads going in two different directions here, both coming to a central point here where we have drafting gates. Um, here the cows will be given selection to go and get milked or be sent to the next paddock if they don't have a right to milk. So maybe if you'd just like to talk about these gates here and um, how the the gates recognize the cow and um, what kind of times per day the gates would usually be changing. Yeah, so this is the first gate to come in from A paddock to push the swing gate in. If they're due for milking, they turn in left off the first gate or back out to where they come from if they're not due for milking. And if they're within the time of a gate change, they continue straight on. So the cows, the cows that aren't allowed back in or do on for the next grazing go straight through and it then turns them out to be grazing or straight on for C. Okay. So um, for the B direction then it's the same kind of scenario push the gate in enter into the second gate due for milking they're back in if they're not due for milking or they're not allowed to their next grazing they're back out to the same area again. Okay. And you find cows going around in circles for a period of time if they are determined to get into the robot to get milked or determined to go onto the next paddock and not go back to where they came from? Yeah, you could have that too, depending on grass allocation. Um, you could get a cow that could come up half an hour between. Yeah. Coming up to gate change and is quite happy to wait. Yeah. And as soon as the gate change then they'll go in. But normally, I suppose, cows that come up are normally due for milking, so they just come straight in. and in our own then to our pre-milk area. And training cows to walk through the, the Texas one-way gates here now, um, what's the strategy I to... I suppose when we are starting off, we'd normally kind of leave the air out of the gates starting off and leave them one direction and maybe tie back one of the Texas gates and just use them, get them to push the brisket in under them. And After a few days, they'd be quite used to pushing yeah, it by yeah, themselves. Yeah, they, they, they learn them very quick now in fairness. Yeah. So. You just introduce, after two or three days, you might introduce the air and you still have to kind of train them through once they kind of get the hang of it. What some people might do as well is put them on the exit of the parlour for a few weeks before they switch over to the robots. Yeah. So the cows yeah, are quite used to going yeah, through them. Yeah, then. it's true. Yeah, some lads have done that. Yeah. So, okay, a cow has a right to milk, so she's drafted in here to the milking area and then she works her way up to the to the robots here, is it? Yeah, it's up around here. This channel here is up to our pre-milk area. So here we have, we have three robots and we have two pits, so one pit for the single robot and then one pit serving as, serving as a single pit for the two robots then. So, so the robots are in um, In a checkout in parallel, system, in yeah, checkout, we call yeah. it. Yeah. So cow flow is optimised with this scenario where all the cows are facing the one direction and they're all heading uh, in one direction yeah. out. So basically the idea is you get your cow in, um, and she's, when she's finished milking, she's out and she's gone. She's not back into cow traffic, basically. So this you idea, see. you get kind of nicer cow flow with it, really. So yeah. You see a lot of systems that are, say, head-to-head -head or in L-shaped. Um, would you prefer the, the checkout versus uh, any of those scenarios? Um, we do, and like we have guys that are head-to-head -head as well. Like so, But, yeah, from our point of view, we kind of like to check out and we like getting cows in and getting them out to grass as soon as possible basically that's what it's all about okay now all of these cows are trained and they're they're quite comfortable to queue up and, and wait for their turn in the robots if you were uh, maybe training a new heifer now or a, a new uh, cow to the herd 
and she she thought she was going into a crush. How, how would you corner her in such a way that she she would have to go through it? Normally, you'd kind of have you'd set one year boxes if you have multiple boxes. Kind of set that as kind of a training one maybe and. Like we have the gate here, it's easy to kind of clean them up in behind it. So you swing the gate out? Yeah. Here, like this? Yeah, and you can follow them in along. Um, normally, what we'd kind of suggest, if at all possible, on a startup, was maybe two to three days before you actually put the cows into the box for the first time, is open the doors and run them in through it, and it just it gets them into the box that little bit easier on start up. Or maybe feed only with no milking or something like that? Not even, in. not even. Maybe let them in and just straight through basically. Just, they know the route into your box then. Like. And for say, um, during breeding season now, um, would you have the bull following the cows in around this area or is he kept outside by the grazeway gates? Yeah, he's kept outside, is he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's never, never allowed in really. Yeah. So I know lads do have him and the, They'd have the bull in here if they wanted, but it is possible, yeah, just stick a collar on them basically, so. Okay. So once the cow is finished milking then, she walks straight out here to the front? Yeah, straight out. Walks down through this selector gate here? Yeah, another selection gate. So, um, normally this gate is, majority of the time is always going left, heading out for grazing. But if ever a reason they need to be segregated, gate will move. You go straight on. The way to have the gates there, straight on, could be back into the shed, maybe at the shoulders of the ear, maybe. And maybe right would be back in around here into this holding area, maybe. So this is an isolation area now for AI it treatment? It could be, yeah, or with the gate open, yeah. yeah. But normally, if that, if that gate was closed, you'd have, you'd have gates there with your cubicles and segregated, so. They're very relaxed around the robot system, aren't they? Yeah. There's no rush on the cows whatsoever? No. They're at their leisure, really. Yeah. And it's something everyone kind of says when they make the move to robotics that it's one thing they do notice is how relaxed their cows become. Like. Yeah. And during periods of the year now, um, would would the, there be an option to walk the cows through a foot bath or is? It yeah. So it's um, the way we have, or Michael has the gate, is instead of the cows coming around, they might let them straight on, open back the gate. Um, and through the foot bat and then into the gate then again. Yeah. So they're back to a square one here and now that they have been milked, the robot knows not to send them back into the milking yard so it yeah. sends them to either A, B or C for grazing. Yeah. Okay. So now once uh, a cow has finished milking here, we're, um, she's back into the, the entrance yard here. She's gonna yep. walk through the selector gate for A, B or C. Yeah. It's gonna decide. Yeah. So she's going straight through onto the next gate. And the gate will decide, the second gate will decide which direction she has to go in, which is out B. Okay, so if you had a scenario where you only had one selector gate here, yep. that would mean that the robots would have to do all of the pre-selection? They would, you, you, with this system, they were, were pre-selecting cows from grazing. So they don't have free access straight into the robots. Correct, yeah. So it keeps cows back out. So that's why we need the extra entrance and exits off it. So Basically, we need four exits, four uh, entries or exit points for ABC and return. Yeah. So the only way we can really do this with our system is to have the double gate. Yeah. And it works well for B returning back in if they're due to go milk or they're due to go on or they're due to go back to where they came from. So that's... So you can achieve the ABC with one gate, but in order to save the time of the robot and make it more efficient, yeah. the two gates, is two gates. works yeah. better. Yeah. Okay, so um, they came from, say, block A in the morning. Um, uh, yep. They would have been, the gates would have opened from block A at roughly around what time? I think it's uh, 2 to 10.30. So A block is 2 to 10.30, then the gate changes to go to B, and B is from 10.30 until 6.30 in the evening. Okay. And then changes again then from 6.30 until 2 in the morning. So would you typically say that you'd offer them roughly the same amount of grass in each block or would you weigh the grass allocation more heavily towards the morning and the middle of the day and give them a tighter period at night? It does depend from farm to farm. Some guys like give them less, less uh, grass in the evening time to get them to come back in. 
the whole idea of us changing gate times at two o'clock in the morning is to get cows moving at that hour of the day promote or the hour of the night yeah. promote cow flow get cows moving because that's the one of the periods where uh, you get least amount of visits and that's where you have to focus on more is to get good flow let's say is to get cows moving at those times especially if you're up to max capacity on absolutely your robots. Yeah. absolutely just yeah. kept keep running all night long. keep keep a steady flow keep a steady flow yeah you don't want your peaks and troughs that you want a, a steady flow like. and i suppose most of the like the the washes that you'd have periodically throughout the day, you'd target them towards your quieter milking times then as well? Absolutely, yeah. I'm not sure what time Michael's uh, wash is. He'd have one automatic wash and one uh, wash that's done manually. So if he's out during the day doing these two checks and it's quite as only a handful of cows, just sets off a wash, 20 minutes. Okay. So one wash is normally fixed, one is, is variable. Then. And uh, grass allocation then, um, I presume, um keeping the grass right in front of the cows to encourage them to walk to and from the paddocks is probably yeah. key. Oh, yeah, absolutely key, yeah, because too much grass, your cow will end up trying to stay there or maybe not graze out properly, and too little grass, they'll just come back up to the yard. So it's, it's a tricky, it's a fine line where most guys, when they start off, find it hard to get their head around it. Like, they go away from locking their cows down and they get a good graze out to, to now asking the cow to go and come back herself. So it, it's, it's, it can be tricky. And with the gap to the paddock open all day long, if she's not happy, she'll just she leave. Can just, she can leave herself, yeah. 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 Some farmers then wait, have uh, water on the roadways and none in the paddocks. Yeah. And some farmers then say, keep the water in the paddocks. So, well, one of the main things would be not to restrict it from water at all, because you want you need water to create milk. Like, yeah. So a lot of people will be very slow to, to take water away from the cows. like but. Obviously, to get them moving maybe first is to turn off the maybe the water in the, in the fields and just bring them out to get them out into the lane to get them to move. Like, works for some farmers, other farmers it doesn't. Some guys leave water in and it works for them. So it's it's kind of a thing you can try to try and get cows movement. Okay. And how um, how long a distance now would the cows be walking roughly on a daily basis? Would you keep them, keep them close to the yard for one paddock and then far away for the next paddock? Well, that's what you would try and do, especially here. Like we have a, a because as you can see in the distance they walk. They can walk quite a, a distance that way, and they walk quite a distance that way. Uh, so the yard is fairly central, is it? Fairly central, yeah. yeah.